ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان نسك الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار First your praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi ulah. The one we turn to in times of ease and in times of hardship. He is subhanahu wa ta'ala the control of our affairs. He is subhanahu wa ta'ala the one we turn to in times of ease and in times of hardship. He is subhanahu wa ta'ala the one we turn to protection from the evils of our own tongue and from the evils of our own desires and from the evils of the whispers of shaitan. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, none can guide. I testify and I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger, the seal of Prophet. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I want us to imagine the day of Hisab, the day of judgment. when those that are most below to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be standing the likes of Abu Bakr the likes of Umar the likes of Uthman Ali the prophets the messengers and those whom are disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the likes of Abu Jahl the likes of Abu Lahab the likes of Firaun and Nimrud all will be standing there for their hisab for their accountability you will see young children Hands will be turning grey out of fear of that day. Pregnant women will be dropping their loads on that day. People will look intoxicated even though they will not be intoxicated. Out of fear of that day. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day will protect certain individuals. Seven under the shade of Allah, under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be protected. Under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. but also a group will be protected whom we may think in society and no more are useless or if we look at when it comes to time of the masjid we are only thinking of the imam or we are thinking about who is giving the lecture we are not thinking about the muaddin and his status and his honor Well, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that on the day of judgment, the muazzin will have torn necks. And orphan at the time culturally, this meant beauty and status will be given to the muazzin on Yom Al Qiyam. And Imam Nawawi, when he did the shah of this, he says that it means that they will rise above their deeds. So when people will be sweating in their when people drowning in their own sweat the muaddinin will rise above it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them that honor So in today's khutbah I want to talk about Sayyid al-Muaddin Bilal ibn Rabah and the reason why I want to talk about Bilal is because I am seeing a lot of in today's community Only recently I heard somebody say to his daughter you can marry who you want but not a black man you can marry who you want but not a black man and many of us have heard this statement before many of us and not only that 
we have in our culture the caste system. You are not on the same level as me. I am a Chaudhary, you are not a Chaudhary. I am a Gujar, you are not a Gujar. And we have this in our society today. And if we read Bilal ibn Rabah's story, you will see a black man, a slave, who had nothing given the honor as high as Abu Bakr, Umar, and the rest of them. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Limada, why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your color. He does not look at your bank balance. He does not look at your status, your lineage. But rather, he looks at your heart. He looks at your iman. He looks at your a'mal. So Bilal ibn Rabah, his father was an Arab, Rabah. His mother was called Hamam. And she was an Ethiopian slave. So when Rabah passed away, he automatically became a slave. And he was sold to the elites of the Quraysh because he was known to have quwa, to have strength. And Umayyah ibn Khalaf purchased Bilal ibn Rabah. And he would use him for the manual labor, the hard work. And then we all know the story of Bilal. So I'm just going to mention certain points to show the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. So when <coughs> Prophet Sallallahu when the news spread that he, be, he, has, he has announced Islam and the news came to Bilal, he wanted to know from his friend Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, is this news true? What is this news? And this is a beauty of Abu Bakr. He was friends with the slave. He was friends with the businessman. <coughs> Abu Bakr at the time was a wealthy businessman. But he spent time with the slaves. And he gave them all their rights. He spent time, he would eat with them, sit with them, talk with them. How many of us today will sit with those below us? Not on the same status as us. How many? Very few of us. Because once we go past a certain state, we do not want to return. So Bilal ibn Rabah, now he is asked Abu Bakr about the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Bakr has told him that yes, the Prophet Sallallahu has come with Islam. So he accepts Islam. But he does not want to come out in the open. So he is still under Umayyad bin Khalaf. And Umayyad bin Khalaf would sit with Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and they would ridicule Islam. They would talk about the Prophet Sallallahu And they would talk how they are going to torture them. What plan shall we come up with? And then one day, one of the mushrikeen comes to Umayyah and says, you are talking about the Prophet and the followers. You have one in your own house. Go and sort him out first. So he goes and finds Bilal and starts to torture Bilal. And he tells the rest of the slaves, also torture him. And they would call him son of a black man, son of a black woman, son of a slave. And they would call him all sorts of names. And every time Umayyah wasn't there to beat him, the other slaves would beat him. And then one day he takes him into the heat after Dhuhr. And whoever has been in Saudi, they know that after Dhuhr is the hottest time. And they laid him on the sun, put a rock upon him. And he was burning and in pain. And all he was saying was Ahadun Ahad. Umar asked him many years later, why were you saying Ahadun Ahad? He said, because I knew it was annoying Umayyah and I wanted to annoy him. I knew it was annoying him. This was the Iman that they had. <clears throat> so the Prophet Sallallahu turned to the Sahaba and said, who is going to free our brother Bilal? So Bakr Siddiq, Siddiq says, I will free him. So he goes and says to Umayyah, how much do you want for Bilal's freedom? He says, give me 10 gold coins. 10 gold coins and you can take him. Abu Bakr gives it and he says, and he starts to laugh. He says, Wallah, if you had given me an ounce of gold, I would have given you him. He is useless, he is worthless to me. He is useless, he is worthless to me. You could take him, you could have took him for nothing if you wanted. Well, Bilal, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq says, Wallah, if you had asked for a hundred gold coins, 
I would have given you a hundred gold coins. You know why they understood brotherhood? They understood when we say love for your brother when you love for yourself, they understood this, they lived this. We just say it. We just say it as a statement because it sounds nice. We don't live by it. They knew one person with Iman is much greater than all the wealth in this world. So they brought, so Bilal Adam was free. And then when they were in Medina, Abdullah ibn Zayd, he saw in a dream the Azan being called. And other Sahabas also had the same dream. They came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I saw in a dream these wordings of the Azan. The Prophet ﷺ did not say, go and call Abu Bakr, go and call Umar, go call my cousin Ali, go call Usman, go call these elites, call those who, are, who have a name, but rather he said, go and call Bilal, that who was a slave, a black man, go and call Bilal and teach him the Azan. And Bilal came, he learned the Azan, went on top of Masjid al Nabi and gave the Azan for the first time in Medina. This was the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, to give the Azan for the very first time in Masjid al Nabi. And not only that, when the conquest of Mecca took place and the Muslimin went to Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ turned to Bilal and said, Arihna ya Bilal, comfort us with what? The Azam. So he went on top of the Kaaba, the Mushrikeen at the time was, look, is this what time has come to? A black man standing on top of our Kaaba. When the Prophet ﷺ, he came, he came to get rid of racism. When the Prophet ﷺ came, he came to get rid of, I am better than you, because this is what the trait of shaitan. What destroys shaitan? I am better than Adam. I am made from fire, he is made from thin clay. Why should I bow down to him? When we are saying, I am a Jodri and he is this, are we not having those same tricks that shaitan had? You see, we always like to give a blind eye. We always like to turn when it comes to ourselves. If you hold yourself accountable before you hold anyone else accountable. Be strict upon yourself. I've seen so many instances, divorces are taking place Somebody will come with a very good marriage proposal, religious, but just because of him not being of the same caste, or her being of the same caste, has literally ended that marriage. They are marrying someone from their own caste who may be a drug dealer, who may be whatever, but being of the same caste is more important. It doesn't matter about the deen. It doesn't matter about the rest of the same caste. That is much more important. And this is a disease we have within ourselves. And then fast forwarding to the Battle of Badr. 313 Muslims. Over a thousand Mushrikeen. And the Prophet ﷺ gathers the Muslim and he gives them the slogan of Bilal of the Allah. Ahadun Ahad. Ahadun Ahad. This is what they are chanting in the battlefield. This is the honor that is given to Bilal. This is the sharaf that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed him upon. Who was he? A slave. A no one. Majority of us would even look twice at him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what was in his heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him to be from those who will be in the highest level of Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the honor that Bilal showed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us role models for the next generation. 
ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us of the major and minor sin. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'ufiru wa na'udu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihillahu falamudillahu wa min yudlil falahadiyala wa shadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharikala wa shadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Amma ba'd My dear respected brothers and sisters when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. Bilal ibn Rabah, he says that my heart was not in Medina no more. I want you to leave. Because he says that I was the Prophet's muhaddin. When the Prophet is not there, how can I make a dhab? And then Abu Bakr, he would constantly say to Bilal, make the adhan, make the adhan. So Bilal said, because he was a khalifa, I made the adhan. He said, when I got to Ashadu Anna Muhammad, I couldn't get past. I kept on crying. So he says, I went to Bela, I went to Abu Bakr, and I said, let me go and fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I want to be with my beloved. So he goes to Damascus, he fights for many years, but he does not become a shaheed. And then he sees in a dream. The Prophet Sallallahu says, why so much pain? Come and pay me a visit. And it's something we should know that seeing the Prophet Sallallahu in a dream is from a hadith. So you could see the Prophet Sallallahu in a dream. So he said, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so I got my stuff and I went to Medina to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I got to Medina, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I gave salam, and I saw Hassan Hussein. <laughs> and he says, they say to me, Ya Bilal, make the adhan for us. Ya Bilal, make the adhan for us one more time. You have come after so many years. So he says, for them, I could not say no. Because of the love that I had for them. And they reminded me of the Prophet. So he says, I went to Masha Nabwi, I made the adhan. And everyone in the marketplaces dropped what they had. Because they thought, this is a voice we heard in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Has a miracle happened that the Prophet ﷺ has returned? So they all came rushing to Masjid Nabi. And they saw Bilal giving the adhan again in Masjid Nabi. And they all came because they knew of his voice. His voice was in the hearts of everyone. This was the honor that was given to Bilal. And when Umar conquered Masjid al Aqsa, Baytul Maqdis, he turns to Bilal and says, Arehna ya Bilal. Make the adhan for us, ya Bilal. The first to make the adhan in Mecca, Bilal. The first to make the adhan in Medina, Bilal. The first to make the adhan in Masjid Aqsa, Bilal. A black man, a slave. No status. A no one. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this honor. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> never think you are better than anyone. Take this arrogance that shaitan had within him out of you. Wallah, you can learn from everyone. Maybe somebody is treating their parents better than the way you are treating your parents. Maybe somebody is treating their neighbors better than you. Never think I am better than this person. Why? Because I pray my five daily prayers. And he doesn't pray. Maybe his akhlaq is hundred times better than yours. Maybe he'll pray once in his life and he'll be accepted and yours are not even accepted in the eyes of the world. Do never become arrogant. Always humble yourself. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at our hearts. And if our hearts are corrupt, then the rest of our bodies are corrupt. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us closer to his deen. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better Muslim. 
That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to attain the highest level of Jannah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad kuna salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad kuna barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasra fil akhirati hasra wa kina azab al-nar. Allahumma ya mukallib al-kulub sabit kulubana ala dinin. Allahumma ya musallif al-kulub sabit kulubana ala ta'atik. Subhana rabbika 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 rabbika